I am Valerie. I'm the product owner of this Mercedes-Benz developers portal. I've been working for Mercedes now for about six years on in the product owner role for different software projects. Um, Felix, a software developer from our team, is also attending and he will join the Q&A session at the end to answer any technical questions that might come up. Um, yeah, I guess most of you probably have heard of Mercedes. Uh, Mercedes is a vehicle manufacturer and one of the largest suppliers of high-end passenger cars and premium vans. And the Mercedes-Benz Developers Portal is the central platform through which the company provides data to external parties. The data products that we provide are based on the data collected by the Mercedes-Benz vehicles. The vehicles are equipped with yeah, all different kinds of sensors that could, for example, weather data, camera recordings, and data from driver assistance systems. So for example, if your car has to do an emergency brake, um, we also use that data in our data products. Um, the data is processed and then packaged into API products. And these are then, as I said, provided to external customers. So all of the products you will see in a little bit um, are just for external customers. We do have another portal for internal use, um, but that, for example, doesn't offer monetization features or anything like that. So now I will jump into our product portfolio that you can see here. This is our product overview page and you can see on the left side, you can filter the products by use case, which is also a nice indicator for um, the, yeah, the users and the customers that we have in our portal. So for example, we offer products for cities. One of those products um, that I um, myself find um, very interesting and helpful is road safety hotspots. And that is a product that provides cities with information about critical areas where there are um, many near accidents. So as I mentioned before, the example with um, your driver access assistance system taking over, if that happens a few times, that area might show up as a road safety hotspot. We also offer products, for example, retail customers. So um, if you are a Mercedes-Benz retailer and you sell our cars, um, you might want to generate some images that also use your company's branding. And if you want to save the money that you would spend on a photographer and so on, you can instead purchase our vehicle images product and um, yeah, generate images using that. Another section or yeah, type of product that we offer is vehicle status products and um, um, yeah, the fight and demand are our electric, electric vehicle status products. Um, and what is special about them is they use personalized um, data. So vehicle images, for example, uses generated images. So no personalized data and therefore not that critical data, but um, we actually use the personal information of a vehicle owner. So um, what we have to do here is be extra careful because we always have to ensure the privacy of our vehicle customers. It's one of our, our top priorities. Um, and when products process personalized data, the vehicle owner always have to give consent to an application that wants to access the data. So for example, if you as a Mercedes-Benz vehicle owner want to use a third party application to track your um, charging processes, then when you use the application the first time, the application has to ask you for your consent that they can access the data. And uh, only after that are you able or is the application able to access the data. And this can of course um, be revoked at any time. Um, 
yeah, then I would show you one of our products in a little bit more um, detail. So what kind of information or other information we offer. Um, I use vehicle images, for example. We've got our overview page um, that just provides general information about the product, what kind of features you have access for, and also um, some inspire stories. So of um, customers that have created some interesting applications and uh, read about projects that have been done using these APIs. You can also see in what kind of packages a product is offered. Here you can see we offer a free trial um, with a limited amount of calls and we also offer different business products for vehicle images depending on um, yeah, how many Im images you want, interior, exterior, um, equipments, and so on. Um, then we also have a detail page um, where you can see more about the exact data points um, that are included. And um, then, of course, the specs and docs. Um, for specs and docs, or for the specs, we use um, the open RP specification standard. And for our push RPs on the product, you might um, get access to a REST API or to a push API. And for push APIs, we use async RP standards. Um, yeah. And uh, what we also offer here is um, the yeah, Swagger tryout feature. So I have created a subscription, which I will show you. Um, next, you can just API key, enter it here, authorize, and then you can call the APIs via the specification without having to use Postman or whatsoever. So very easy to try this out. The docs include puts all information that you need to integrate and get started with an API, um, including example requests, example responses, error responses. And yeah, here you can even see some of the images that are um, generated or can be generated using our vehicle images API. And we also have an FAQ section, but um, I'll say more about that later. So now that you've seen what kind of products we offer and also how our product pages are structured, I'd like to show you what we offer when it comes to um, onboarding. So how do we make sure that our customers can get started smoothly and how do we support them in case any questions come up? We've got this get started section here on the top. And this includes quite a brief step-by-step um, -step tutorial with the most important information um, to uh, create an application or create a project and then also subscribe to a, a product and generate the credentials, which is basically all you need to get started. Um, we link to uh, some other parts of the developer port. So, for example, um, this is yeah, kind of an overview page that links to different um, other pages where you can find more information. For example, if, if you want to know more about um, the security or if you want to know more about um, uh, the OAuth integration. So yeah, depending on the product, there's a different authorization um, required that uh, we will lead you to uh, more detailed information. And yeah, this is our step brief, <laughs> short and sweet step-by-step -step tutorial for creating a project and adding a subscription to the project and um, then generating the credentials, which um, I will also show you um, with yeah, my user just now. Um, in case there are still some questions after you've gone through um, the onboarding tutorial, which um, of course <laughs> might be the case, um, we also have a support area in the portal, which includes 
and FAQ section. And here we have added the most frequent questions that came up via our support or via the product managers that are also in direct contact with the customers. So we uh, add questions when they come up through different sources and yeah, hope that we can help also reduce um, support requests by this. But if your question wasn't in this list and you still have some um, uh, things that you need to ask, you can continue to um, our support form, choose the product that you want to um, ask a question about, and then this will be forwarded directly to our support team. We use Jira Service Management for this, and um, yeah, so then you will receive an email um, with a link to your support ticket, and then you can easily track the status and just check who's working on it and ask some more questions if you need to. Okay, so now that I've shown you our onboarding bits, um, I will briefly show you how to register and how to uh, create a subscription and create your project. So if you've not, if you don't have an account yet, this could also be a Mercedes Me account in case you are um, you have a Mercedes and you are already registered um, on another Mercedes platform, you could use that as well. I will use my test account um, because I have already created a project that I can show you. So I will go to the poll. And in this area, you can see uh, you have an overview. Um, you can give feedback um, about the products, about um, generally, uh, yeah, general um, portal feedback, and then you can see your projects. I've got one here right now that I already created previously. Um, you can see I also already created some credentials. And I have the free product subscribe that I told you earlier. And if I want to create another project, um, I can do that very quickly by entering the right information. And then I can add the product and um, take the videos. And then I can decide again, do I want a free trial or pilot with limited calls, or do I want to purchase it straight away? I'm going for the trial, and then I can subscribe. And then my subscription is ready to go, and I can generate PI key. then start using the product <laughs> and that's, this is um, basically our onboarding and um, yeah registration process. Then um, yeah the next bit would be about the metrics that we use in the developer portal. Um, we've got an API status page which yeah is particularly interesting for our customers that use the APIs. And yeah, short disclaimer here, you can see our um, two incidents at the moment active that is due to a migration that um, took place today for some of the anonymized data products. So our colleagues are still working on this and trying to figure out how to solve the issues. Um, but what you can see here is um, the API status of the product and um, you can also subscribe to uh, the products that you are interested in so simply uh, enter the email and then you can decide um, or check which products um, 
you want to subscribe to. When you're subscribed to a product, um, you will receive um, near planned incidences via email. So when prior before the, sorry, that's not a planned incident, <laughs> that's a planned downtime. So when a downtime is planned, you will receive an email prior to the downtime taking place. You will be notified once the downtime starts and then you will be notified once the downtime is resolved. And also, um, this is connected to our auto automated testing. So um, the status changes automatically when the test fails. Um, then, yeah, the status will change here and you will receive an email as that um, an API is down. And then once the test is green again, you will receive an email and the issue has been resolved. Um, so yeah, that is a, a very important page for us. Um, otherwise, we also have a platform integrated an analytics platform called Matomo, um, which I as a product owner find very helpful. And um, yeah, this is a dashboard that you can see here and information about the usage of the different pages of the portal and um, about how many visits do we have? Where exactly do the users come from? Um, which are the entry pages? What are the pages? How much time do users spend on a specific page? Um, and also which elements work? Or, or well, for example, interested in a specific button. Um, we can all that. And also, um, for example, we are tracking um, our purchasing flow. So at which point of the purchasing process does a customer leave the process? Because it might be an indicator for process is not explained well enough or um, there are some other steps that need to be done that um, yeah, the customer needs to do, for example, create a project before they can um, subscribe to a product. Um, there's also very helpful um, user flow visualization um, and you can from which pages or which pages users go through and that gives a very good insight. So this is another tool we use. We also use Google Search Console as well. Um, and then I also would like to talk a bit about our um, team. So. <laughs> how we work together and who is involved in create developer portal and also the products that we provide via the developer portal. Yeah, as mentioned, I'm the product owner um, and I take care of the stakeholder management and all, all the communication with our dev team. We've got a software development team um, from Codecentric and then we are also working with a UI UX studio called Goodmates. And we've got a one permanent UI UX designer. And then we also, depending on um, yeah, the topic, um, get help from a copywriter and from a, um, a concept designer. Then on the internal side, we have our API management platform team. Yeah, who is provide platform through which all of the products are provisioned. Um, then we've got the product managers. So each of the products you've seen before, they've got a product manager that takes care of, yeah, pretty much everything related to a product, um, updates, customer communication, customer surveys, um, and also um, alignment with the data product development team. So when, for example, a new version goes live, there are different kind of changes that need to be done. And the product managers also take care of all of the content that you can see in the developer portal. So what we try to do um, with regards to uh, the product managers and also the API providers is um, help them to kind of be independent. So with our content management system, a product manager can create their own product pages. They can upload the specs, they can upload the docs and do all of that. 
so they can onboard a product, anybody else having to be involved. And on the platform side, um, it works kind of similar. They also have a self-service process. Um, and um, yeah, so the A providers are there as well involved um, in that way. And um, yeah, we work together very closely. Uh, um, as you can see, uh, they are involved. So we do have quite a few um, internal meetings. And um, especially uh, when a new product goes live or when a new version of a product goes live, um, we've got an internal process. <laughs> you know, companies like processes. So um, we are using and Jira to track all of the tasks that need to get done and assign them to the corresponding people um, to make sure that, for example, data um, is included in a new version, has been through, has gone through our data clearance, and um, that legal has checked that everything is conform to our guidelines and that. Um, yeah, all of these things are done before a product can actually go live. Yeah, and uh, that is all for me for now. So if you have any questions, um, I'll try to answer them if they are more technical. As I said, um, Felix from our software development team will join the stage. Hello. Hi, Felix. Thank you, Valerie, and uh, welcome, Felix. Great that you could make it. Um, would you please uh, give just a quick introduction about yourself? What is your role in uh, the developer portal? Um, I'm one of the portal developers. So my team uh, is primarily responsible for what you saw uh, before. Uh, we manage and uh, maintain the portal the uh, content management system, uh, system, the system that provides all the documentation and spec, uh, specs, and also the, the UI and mm -hmm. uh, the connection to all the backend systems um, we need to access to manage the purchase flow and the subscription and credentials. Mm -hmm. Basically right. that. Thank you. Uh, then I guess the first question might be for um, Valerie, not sure. Who gets the, do you like this product feedback uh, from your team? Is that specific to the portal as it's you? Um, how do you act on that kind of feedback? Oh yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so um, we use UserSnap for that kind of feedback. As I said, for the support request, we have Jira Service Management. And for the general portal feedback and the product feedback, we use UserSnap. And um, yeah, I receive a feedback and go through it and then forward it to the product managers. So if we receive information that there are some issues with the product I'm happy, sometimes happens. Um, we try to match the request with um, requests from the support because any uh, feedback we collect via user snap is um, anonymized because we are allowed to track personalized via user snap. And um, then, yeah, we try to contact the customer if possible if we find a support request. And otherwise, it's just helpful insights for us to figure out um, how well a product is perceived and um, yeah, what we can improve because we do get um, quite a few suggestions for improvement, which is great. Mm -hmm. Felix, do you have something to add to this? Um, maybe we every second week we have a um, kind of meet a uh, stand up with Valerie as uh, like Valerie as the product owner, the UX designer, and we as the development team and discuss all the feedback we get. And also we do that for the Matomo um, matrix. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, uh, it's, we can also participate and give a developer point of view back to, uh, back to the feedback or back to Valerie. Mm -hmm. 
And this kind of cues into Jackie's question, what kind of decisions uh, or changes do you make for the portal based on the, the metrics that you see like from Matomo? Um, yeah, actually uh, um, we or I use the insights from Matomo in different ways. One of them is figure out which areas um, are used and which areas are not used. So in which areas we really need to uh, work more on. And also, for example, um, <laughs> yeah, so last year when we migrated the API management platform from um, yeah, Google Apigee to uh, Azure Cloud, um, we didn't migrate the consumption report. So we used to provide a consumption report for our end customers where you could see how many calls they made um, for their description. And we saw that that's really, um, the user really want that back via our Matomo metrics. So for me as a product owner, the deal is now we're going to bring it back. Before that, I didn't know if um, that was actually really required. So it does help to make um, decisions about implementing a feature or not, therefore helps us to uh, yeah, use the resources we have in the most, um, most helpful way. Mm -hmm. um, there is a question um, about how you manage purchases and subscriptions. Um, I'm not sh sure what you would want to add to that. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, I can um, try to the way I understand it. We've got a uh, um, subscription management portal for that. So um, it actually depends on what kind of subscription, what you saw go through um, in the demo was I subscribed to a tribe product. So that subscription is created automatically and ready to use with business subscriptions because it is data business and um, we have to set up a contract with each business customer who wants to purchase a business subscription. It is not possible to subscribe to a business package in the self-service process. We have a, a subscription management platform that, um, for that. That yeah, it's also part of our um, developer portal system and by um, yeah <laughs> field. And uh, via that, you can create a subscription. So that is also our customer support who, who does that. And um, yeah, get all of the insights, which customer is subscribed um, to which product and um, how many projects a customer has and so on. So that's how, how we deal with that. Mm -hmm. Valerie, Felix, thank you very much. Um, if uh, somebody has further questions, uh, then um, after uh, Jackie's presentations, we come back to the uh, shared general hall and there you can talk directly. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you.